قالوا كيف نكلم من كان في المهد صبيا قال إني عبد الله آتاني الكتاب وجعلني نبيا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قال إني أبد أبد الله يتاني الكتاب وجعلني نبيا وجعلني مباركا أينما كنت وأوصاني بالصلاة وزكاة ما دمت حيا وبارا بوالدت ولم يجلني جبارا شقيا والسلام على يوم ولدت ويوم أموت ويوم أباث حيا ذلك عيسى ابن مريم قول الحق الذي فيه يمترون ما كان لله أن يتخذ من ولد سبحان إذا قضى أمرا فإنما يكون له كن فيكون وأن الله ربي وربكم فامدوا هذا صراط مستقيم صدق الله مولانا العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم uh, I began by reciting a few verses from the Quran uh, concerned with the, the birth of Sidna Isa, Jesus. And, and these are the words uh, that he actually spoke soon after he had been born. Uh, and in order to put it in context, I'll read the, the passage of the translation uh, that, that has those words in it. Uh, I think it's important uh, in this time when people are celebrating Christmas in so many different ways to actually reflect very deeply about who Jesus was and is. Um, my youngest daughter the other day said, are you going to dress up like Father Christmas? And I said, I am Father Christmas. And she said, oh, wonderful. But uh, it shows um, how pervasive the kind of media presentation is of the celebration of Jesus, which is somehow mixed up really with the kind of uh, pagan winter solstice festival, which has always used to be taken place uh, in Europe. Uh, and also the, the popular myths that have risen up uh, around Saint Nicholas, who became Santa Claus, and, and all the uh, celebrations of presents and Christmas trees, none of which actually goes back to Jesus. So really we want to look uh, in this program at uh, what the Muslim understanding of Jesus is, and, and what a deep respect and love for Jesus that Muslims have, because we have to believe in all the prophets and messengers that were sent by God to man, uh, all 124,000 of them. And of those 124,000, we only know the names of a few of them. But Jesus certainly uh, was one of the most important ones. So I'll just read the, the translation uh, from that uh, part of the Quran which deals with the birth of Jesus. And this is in the Surah Maryam which is named after his mother. Allah be pleased with both of them. And mention Mary in the book when she withdrew from her people to a place in the east and chose seclusion from them. Then we sent our spirit, the angel Gabriel, to her and he appeared to her as a perfect man. She said, surely I seek refuge in the merciful one from you if you fear Allah. He said, surely I am only a messenger from your Lord to give you news of a pure son. She replied, How can I have a son when no man has touched me and when I have never been immoral? He said, Just like that, your Lord says it is easy for me, and we shall make him a sign for mankind and a mercy from us, and it is something which has already been decreed. And so she conceived him, and she withdrew with him to a place which was far away, and the pains of childbirth drove her to the trunk of a palm tree. She said, Oh, would that I had died before this and become nothing, forgotten. And then it was said to her from below her, Do not be sad. Your Lord has placed a small stream beneath you and shake the tree of the palm tree to towards you. 
you will make fresh ripe dates fall around you. So eat and drink and be comforted. And if you meet any man, then say, Surely I have made a vow to the merciful one to fast, and I may not speak to anyone today. And it's said that these words were the first words of Jesus uttered straight after he was born, these words of comfort to his mother. Then she brought him to her people, carrying him. They said, O Mary, you have indeed come with something deceitful. O sister of Harun, because she was descended from Harun, the, the brother of Moses. Your father was not a wicked man, and your mother was never immoral. Then she pointed to him. They said, how can we talk to a baby in his cradle? He said, meaning Jesus, and this was the, the verses I recited, Surely I am the slave of Allah. He has given me the book, and he has made me a prophet, and he has made me blessed wherever I may be, and he has made the prayer and zakat obligatory for me as long as I live, and he has made me obedient towards the one who bore me, and he has not made me tyrannical or ungrateful. And peace be on me, the day I was born, and the day I die, and the day I shall be brought back to life. So in this very short passage, there are other verses which deal with this event in more detail. We, we see a completely different description of the birth of Jesus to, to the popular one that is promoted in the media today, that, that Mary was, uh, gave birth to him in a remote place by herself, uh, uh, not in a stable, uh, and, um, and she found it very difficult. And in fact, I, I spoke to one sheikh in Sudan who said, did you know that the pregnancy of Mary was only a few hours? And when he said that, I immediately thought of this passage because I thought, well, you know, when I first read it, um, surely people would have questioned her before Jesus was born, peace be on him, because they would have seen signs of pregnancy after six months. And, and yet they were asking this after he'd been born. But if it just happened very quickly then this would explain that. Uh, we don't have time to look at all the miracles of Jesus during his life, uh, but he had many. He brought, by the permission of Allah, he brought uh, the dead to life. He cured the leper. He cured the blind. Uh, he made many, many miracles. He fed many people with, a, with little food. Uh, and this was why that some people believed that he was the Son of God. But as we've seen from this passage, uh, Allah makes it very clear that uh, it's impossible really for Allah to have a son. Everything is by the command of Allah. And Perhaps the most well-known uh, example of, of uh, Siddhna Isra of Jesus feeding many people was the feeding of the 5,000. Uh, it's covered in the four accepted Gospels. Uh, in the New Testament, and it's also uh, covered by the Gospel of Barnabas. And, and in a way, the advantage of this account is that it is by one of the actual disciples of Jesus, one of his close companions. And in it, he describes not only the miracle of feeding so many people with so little, but also uh, he goes into the reason why everyone had been gathered to begin with. And it was because, because of his miracles that in his lifetime people were saying that he must be the son of God, he's no ordinary man. You know, no, no ordinary man can, can do these miracles, even though he said when he carried them out, by the permission of the one in whose hand myself is, meaning uh, God, meaning Allah. Uh, and so he called everyone in order to prove to them that he, he wasn't divine. And so he called one of the scribes who, who was a person who knew the Torah, the, the revelation that had been given to Moses well, and said to him, does, and he went through the attributes of God and then his own attributes, and he says, you know, doesn't it say in the Torah that God has no beginning and no end? And he said, yes, that's what it says. And he says, doesn't it say that God cannot be contained by anything or any place? You know, he, he cannot be contained by anything. He says, yes, it says that. Doesn't it say that he, cr he created everything? and that he gives everything life and he gives everything death. He said, yes, that's what it says. Uh, and he said, doesn't it say that God doesn't sleep or, or slumber? He said, yes, that's what it says. He said, doesn't it say that God has no need of food or, or water? He doesn't need anything to keep him alive. And he said, yes, that's what it says you know, in, in, in the Torah. And then Jesus said to the people, this is according to the account of Barnabas, well, look at my attributes. I, I have a beginning and an end. 
I was born from a woman. I eat food. I have to go to the toilet. Uh, you can see me in front of you. I'm not uh, uh, you know, hidden from you. Uh, I'm contained within my body, and, and my body is contained with it having to live on the earth, which is contained within the universe. Uh, I, I couldn't create a fly even if I tried. So clearly I don't have the attributes of God, I need, and also I need to sleep. You know, I, I, I can't live without sleep. I can't live without food. I'm clearly a, a created being. And then the people say, well, then who are you? Because you have all of these miracles, so who are you? And then he says, I'm a messenger, I'm a prophet. You know, I've been sent by God to teach people how to live and to call them to the truth. And in fact, we know from the Quran that he was sent specifically to the tribe of Israel in order to revive the teaching of Moses, which somehow had been hijacked and, and turned into a, an organized religion rather than the original teaching that it was before. So this was the, this was the basic message that, that he uh, gave. And, and as we heard from the, 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 uh, the verses that I recited, his message was, as has been the message of all messengers and all prophets, Allah is my Lord and your Lord, so worship him. And as I said, we'll just look at the, the passage uh, of uh, the Quran where it comes to the questioning of Jesus on the last day because uh, as all the prophets, he, he told people that you will be brought back to life on the day of resurrection. You will be questioned about your intentions and actions. And according to what you intended and did in your life, you will be judged and you will be sent to the garden or you will be sent to the fire. So this passage covers when he will be questioned. And when God says, O Jesus, son of Mary, did you say to people, take me and my mother as two gods instead of Allah? He will reply, glory be to you. It was not for me to say what I had no right to say. If I ever said that, then you would certainly know it. You know what is in me, and I do not know what is in you. Surely it is only you who knows what is hidden. I only told them what you commanded me to. Worship Allah, my Lord and your Lord. And while I dwelt amongst them, I was a watcher over them. And when you took me up, then you were a watcher over them, and you watch over everything. If you punish them, then surely they are your slaves. And if you forgive them, then surely you're the mighty, the wise. So this is what Jesus will say on the last day. This is what Allah tells us Jesus will say. Uh, and it's interesting also that in this passage, he mentions about Allah taking him up to him. Uh, and this is another point where there's great clarity in the Quran uh, about the supposed crucifixion of Jesus. And Allah confirms categorically in the Quran that it was not Jesus who was crucified. In fact, in the Gospel of Barnabas, it said it was Ju Judas who was made to look like Jesus, and it was Judas who was crucified, which to me seems a very just uh, result, if you like, because Jesus had sold him uh, you know, for 30 pieces of gold uh, you know, to, to, to betray Jesus. Uh, and in fact, he was hoist on his own petard. Um, there isn't time to go into this into great detail, but certainly Allah says, for certain, yakinan, uh, Jesus was not crucified, but it seemed so to them, to the point that even Mary and his close followers thought that it was him on the cross, but it wasn't. Uh, and in the next part of this program, I will actually look at um, another very important aspect of the life of Jesus, and this is the aspect of the life of Jesus which is still to come, when he returns back to the earth. And this is something that uh, both the Christians and the Muslims believe, uh, but the Muslims have more detail about the nature of this return of Jesus and what he will do when he returns. <laughs>
قالوا كيف نكلم من كان في المهد صبيا قال إني عبد الله آتاني الكتاب وجعلني نبيا It has been related by Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, that the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah bless him and grant him peace, said, The Prophets are like brothers. They have different mothers, but their way of life is one. I am the closest of all the people to Jesus, son of Mary, because there is no other Prophet between him and myself. He will come again, and when you see him, you will recognize him. He is of medium height, and his coloring is reddish white. He will be wearing two garments, and his hair will look wet. He will break the cross, kill the pigs, abolish the jizya, and call the people to Islam. During his time, Allah will end every religion and sect other than Islam, and will destroy the Dajjal. Then peace and security will prevail on earth, so that lions will graze with camels, tigers with cattle, and wolves with sheep. Children will be able to play with snakes without coming to any harm. Jesus will remain for 40 years, and then die and the Muslims will pray for him. Uh, and in fact, we know that he will be buried next to the Prophet Muhammad in Medina. And uh, you know, if you're allowed to look closely, you can actually see the space that has been reserved for him uh, between the graves of the Prophet Muhammad, blessings and peace be on him, and Sidna Abu Bakr, who is buried next to him. Uh, and this allusion at the beginning of the hadith to the, uh, the fact that prophets have different mothers uh, but the same father, he's, this is an allusion actually to the prophet Abraham, uh, who through different wives, Hagar and Sarah, uh, had uh, Ismail and Ishaq. And Muhammad is descended from Ismail, and Jesus is descended from Ishaq. So this is the, the outward meaning of the, these words. The inward meaning is that they both have the same teaching about Tawheed, about the unity of God but they have different sharias, they have different uh, outward practices. Although in fact they are remarkably similar in their basics. But you find that the sharia of, of Musa is much more intricate, uh, much more detailed, and it's, it's been made simpler for people in this last phase of human existence. Uh, and we see here also the reference uh, to the coming of the Dajjal, uh, the Antichrist, who again is described in great detail in the Hadith, and, and he will be fighting the Mahdi, the, the, the rightly guided leader of the Muslims, sometime in the end times. We haven't, we're approaching it, but we don't know when it will come. In the middle of this fight between the rightly guided leader of the Muslims, the Mahdi, and the Dajjal, Jesus will descend, and it's related that he will descend in Damascus, and he will then oppose the Dajjal and kill him with a miracle and his followers. So this is something that lies in the future. And then he will be a leader and a just judge of the Muslims. And more than this, he will lead them in the prayer. And this is very interesting because it means that, uh, and it shows how unique Jesus is, because he knew the Torah by heart, the revelation given to Moses. He knew the Injil by heart, the revelation that was given to him. And he will know the Quran by heart, the revelation that was given to the Prophet Muhammad. But as we know, the Quran both confirms and abrogates the earlier revelation. So he will actually live when he returns in accordance with the Quran. And so in this hadith, uh, we have these words. It has been related by Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, that the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah bless him and grant him peace, said, What will you do when the son of Mary descends amongst you and leads as one of you? Ibn Abi Dhib, on the authority of Abu Huraira, narrated, your leader amongst you. Ibn Abi Dhib said, do you know what the words and leads you as one of you mean? I said, explain these to me. He said, he will lead you in accordance with the book of your Lord. May he be glorified and exalted, the Quran, and the sunnah of your messenger. May Allah bless him and grant him peace. So, for example, the Jews say uh, the Messiah hasn't come yet, we're still waiting for him. The, the Christians have made the mistake, the majority of them, of thinking that Jesus is the Son of God. And obviously, if this, if this was possible, if, if it was possible 
to have a son of God, then he would be above any messenger or prophet sent by God. But, uh, and because of this, they believe that when Jesus comes, uh, it'll be like a time of heaven on earth and Jesus will sit at the right hand of the Father and on his left will be the Holy Ghost. Uh, and they have this kind of rather um, imprecise uh, view of what life would be like then. But the Muslim's understanding is that when he returns, he will return as a leader. He will break the cross because he wasn't crucified. He will abolish the jizya, which is the tax which is paid by the people of the book to the Muslims when they are in power and have governance on the earth something that doesn't exist today. And uh, he will be a just judge and leader. And after he dies, the time between that and the end of the world will be very close. And then Allah will send uh, a wind that it smells like musk that will take the arwa, will take the spirits of all the believing people. And then those who are left on the face of the earth will live like animals. And then uh, Israfil uh, will blow the trumpet, whatever that means. It's obviously not a glorified trombone in the sky, but it would be this incredible thunderclap, you could say, twice. And, and on the first sound of this incredible sound, everything on the face of the earth will die. And on the second, everyone who has ever lived will be brought back to life. And it is at this time that the earth will be reduced to a vast plain. All the mountains will become dust. All the oceans will dry up and everyone will be assembled before their Lord. And then their different messengers and prophets will intercede for them. But the person who will have the greatest intercession is the Prophet Muhammad, blessings and peace be on him. And he will intercede for his, for his community. <laughs> قال إني عبد الله آتاني الكتاب وجعلني نبيا وجعلني مبيا